Hello, everyone. This is Jeff with the Cybersecurity and IT Professional Podcast, where industry leaders share their insights. It's six questions in nine minutes because hackers never sleep. So let's get into it. Question number one, in a few sentences, Andy, tell us who you are and what you do. I'm the Vice President of Technology and the CISO for Apollo Information Systems. We are a VAR that really focuses on the V, adding value to the relationship. And I was previously the Deputy CISO for the state of Texas, and uh, I've been around the block a couple times. Been in, been in IT since 1996 and started in security in 2003. Very cool. Question number two, what is the best thing about being a CISO? The best thing about being a CISO, this is the question I have no idea how to answer because it is just such a cool job. You get to learn so many new things. You are never not learning if you're still doing the job. And so uh, I, I think that's what pulls me in and doesn't let me go Johnny Montana style. Excellent. Question number three. We hear from other industry leaders that cybersecurity is a top five concern and only getting bigger. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? Uh, I wish it meant that every program was getting resourced the way they should. I wish it meant that uh, focus and visibility led to progress and a higher visibility of the actual uh, underpinnings of that need, but it hasn't gotten there yet. And I'm afraid that it's probably going to have to get worse. Uh, we've had a rough week this past week with, uh, with a number of very high profile attacks that I won't name because I don't like the victim shame, but uh, I, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that progress is being made, but it is the first step. Could not have put it better. Uh, question number four, uh, and we started talking about this already. What insights about why you don't actually work in security would you like to share with our community? Absolutely, this is my number one point of advocacy in the security community is so many people, when you ask them what they do, they'll tell you, I work in security. I'm a security analyst. I'm a security architect. I'm a CISO. And, and that's cool. That's just a job description. That's not actually what you do. None of us actually work in security unless our day job is providing outsourced security services. And even then, our company still sells something to get that contract, which means we are in the business. We are all in the business of whatever the company we work for does. If you're a CISO or a security analyst or literally anybody working at a company that builds cars, you are in the car business. If you are in the banking industry and you're, and you're the CISO at a bank, you're the analyst at a bank, you're actually a banker who happens to support the secure delivery of financial assurances. You are not an actual security person. That's just what you do. You are a banker. And it really, really, the number one problem that the security community has, and it's, it's not new, but it is endemic, is that uh, so often we get so dragged down into the weeds where we are focused on the threat intel and the vulnerability scans and the mechanical minutia that we forget that we work for a business. We forget that if that business can't do their job, we're out of one. We forget <sighs> that the revenue of the company is what pays our paycheck. And we, we argue with each other, and I've been guilty of it too, where where we say, well, the business just doesn't understand and they don't get it. It's not the business's job to get it. It's our job to put things out there, explain them and join the conversation in, in a way that allows us to bring them to the table and allows us to stay at the table. Because if you just go in and you, and you throw, this is the weakness, we're all gonna get owned. We're all, uh, we're all gonna be out of business next week. They're going to run you right out of the room because they are more interested in what the revenue forecast is next week than in your ranting and ravings. But if you can couch and join that discussion in terms of how what you're doing ensures next week's revenue forecast, that's hugely different. Don't talk about the vulnerabilities. Talk about the impacts. Talk in terms of business. And it's very hard. We, we've all, the, another perennial challenge is describing the needs of security in terms of business and describing the benefits of security in terms of business because we very rarely are able to say we make the company money. It's a cost center, but IT in general is also a cost center. Around the enterprise, some areas are getting better at demonstrating a return on investment, a return of value, 
back to the organization as a direct metric of cost, right? We, we cost this much to do a thing, but our thing brought in this much money. And unless you are doing that thing at a security company and writing the security tools that you are then selling and possibly also using, that doesn't apply. And so you have to come up with different ways to couch that. Things like learning terms of cost avoidance. What is the future cost avoidance? And what is the return on security value or investment? Because if you change that and you add, instead of ROI, you say ROSI, at Apollo, we call that the ROSI, return on security investment. And you look at it in terms of containment, avoidance, uh, <clears throat> future reallocations. So if you can, if you can look at your portfolio and, and look at where the highest risk is, because that's all we are. We're risk management professionals who happen to have a, pr a particular set of skills, Liam Neeson style, right? We are, we are out there focus so heavily that we forget to take the time to learn what we actually do for a living. That's why we don't work in security. We're in banking, we're in automotive, we're in global logistics, we're in technology, we're in finance, we're in all, we are all of those things and we happen to secure the delivery of that business. And if we lose that focus or if we never take the time to gain that focus, we're never going to reach the full potential of the value we can provide back to our organizations. And so that's why it's the number one point of advocacy for me. And I think that uh, uh, if, if I could come up with a curriculum to help people understand what each of their businesses do, I'd probably be rich tomorrow. And anybody who could really truly do that, uh, unfortunately, even if you could do that, getting the time freed up because of the chronic under-resourcing, it's a chicken and egg problem, right? The chronic under-resourcing at, at security shops across the board uh, one of the reasons that we get stuck in the mechanical minutia is because we don't have the resources to take the time to think strategically and get out of firefighting, the tactics of day-to-day -day firefighting. And so we, we, we have trouble taking a long enough, far enough step back to get that full perspective. And so uh, I, I, know, I, I know that there's going to be a lot of folks out there who just say, I don't have the time or they won't listen. But trust me, if you take the time to actually learn their language, and speak to them in their language of business, of revenue, of finance, of automotive, of logistics, you will make leaps and bounds progress more than you ever thought you possibly could. How are we on time? We're doing good. Wow. And I have to say, I was taken by your response. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen, we, we got a minute left. So final question. What is your favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile? So my favorite piece of retro technology is probably not one that you've had. It is a hand plane. Woodworking is my hobby and it is absolutely amazing. If you think right now we have power tools left and right, but if you think about it, we are not the first generation to produce fine furniture. The tools that they used back in the day to do these things are amazing. They are works of art. So I love my NES and my Atari, but my favorite retro tech are hand tools. Beautiful, beautiful. Love the reach back on that one. Uh, if, if our viewers want to learn more about you, what you do, what Apollo does, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Check us out at our website, apollo-is.com. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, to all of us here, uh, I wish you a very happy holidays as we're coming up on it. Please be sure to check out more episodes and insights on the cybersecurity and IT professional podcast. My name is Jeff. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.